Welcome back to another episode of Alchemy, where we'll dive deep into the alchemy of self-discovery and personal growth. Recording from Tulum in Mexico, I'm your host, Elle, and over the past two years, I have undergone a personal transformation that not even I could have imagined. So I'm here to share the secrets, insights, and wisdom that I have gained along the way so that you too can unlock your inner potential. Join me as we explore taboo topics, we embrace our inner rebels, and revolutionize our lives while having fun along the way. So let's get started on this journey of self-discovery together. Hey guys, welcome back. Today is Friday the 22nd of September 2023 and it's just gone 2.30 and I am coming to you live from my studio in Tulum. To say I haven't slept is an understatement. Last night was literally batshit crazy. So we've got a small little problem in Tulum. There's a lot of bats. I don't know if it's just a seasonal thing, but there are lots of bats and there's a lot of bat shit. So my condo is on the third and fourth floor with the sun deck being the penthouse, the fourth floor. I have got a wild cat who I rescued two years ago in Playa del Carmen and called her Ayahuasca. The name suits her perfectly. So every so often, Ayahuasca gets out. What she does is she jumps over my little swimming pool upstairs, literally, I don't know how she does it, tight ropes the ledge, which is probably maybe an inch or two inches wide, and jumps into the neighbor's pool area sun deck area and then the other neighbor and the other neighbor because obviously they all linked anyway last night there were bats in the trees and I can only imagine that ayahuasca tried to jump into the tree to get a bat so at two o'clock this morning I woke up to this loud cat meowing ayahuasca has got a very distinct cat meow it actually sounds like she's calling me mom mom I won't imitate it but I recognize it immediately so she didn't come She didn't come home last night for food and I called. No sign of ayahuasca. Shanti and Jatem were still around. They came. They were next door, but they came over. And uh, no sign of ayahuasca. So I was a bit worried where she might be. But, you know, she's a cat and I just trusted that she would come back. She's a smart cookie. Anyway, two o'clock this morning, I'm fast asleep and I hear ayahuasca calling me. So I jump up, put on some clothes, run downstairs and I'm searching Everywhere for I I went upstairs first to the sun deck area, called her, could not find her, but I could hear her meowing. Went downstairs, searched the area, could not find her, could only hear her. It was pitch black. Came back upstairs, tried to sleep. Of course, I couldn't sleep. I was worried about her and she was meowing relentlessly. And then I had the other two on my balcony looking out, trying to call her too. So I had these three cats in a chorus of cat meows between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m. I didn't sleep at 6 a.m. I eventually went down because it was getting lighter outside. The sun was rising and uh, there she was in one of the trees, probably 60 feet up. And uh, it was off my neighbor's house, so I couldn't reach her, couldn't get into the tree. Long story short, by 9.30 this morning, Myself, with the help of the community of workers that are here, the security, the receptionist, and a few other staff members who only speak Spanish, Mexican, they don't speak English, and I don't speak Spanish, so I don't know how we did it, but we communicated, and they helped me get ayahuasca down this tree. It was an absolute nightmare. We tried everything. She wouldn't come down. I brought a can of tuna. That didn't get her down. We shook the tree. It was... it. It was quite a heavy, like a, obviously a heavy tree, but um, it didn't have any branches, so she couldn't sort of climb down. Well, she didn't. She decided not to reverse down the tree, and no one could climb up very far. So eventually, the one worker decided to get a pool net with an extension. So they got the pool net, and were like poking her in the trees, like literally sixty feet up. It was horrendous. And then another two Mexicans got a black garbage bag, an empty black garbage bag, and stood underneath the pool net in Ayahuasca 60 feet up to catch her. The guy poked her with the pool net and she fell 60 feet down onto 
<laughs> onto the black garbage bag. So she was saved. And then, of course, as soon as she fell down, she jumped up and ran. I ran after her. I don't know how I managed to catch her. Grabbed her by the neck and brought her upstairs. So my poor little ayahuasca is absolutely traumatized and distraught. I don't think I'll ever let her out again. Um, she's not eating, not drinking, but I think she just needs her sleep. She's been up there for maybe 12 hours, no water, no food. When I saw her eventually in the daylight this morning, the poor little thing was shaking, trembling, meowing. She was panting. So she's very dehydrated and distressed. So that broke my heart this morning. That's what I've been dealing with since two o'clock this morning. So on that note, I should be exhausted and possibly having a nap, a cat nap like ayahuasca, but I have got something really exciting to share with you. Um, I am enthused, I'm motivated, I feel inspired, and I just want to share the story. It is a good one, so stay tuned. Today, I'm talking to you about microdosing. Microdosing mushrooms, psilocybin shrooms. Now, just a little disclaimer. It's important to keep in mind that the legal status of psychedelics can change from place to place, and regulations might have shifted since I last checked. It's a smart move to consult up-to-date scientific literature and have a chat with mental health professionals to get the latest scoop on how microdosing fits into the whole depression and anxiety treatment landscape. Always prioritize your safety and stick to evidence-based approaches. Now, when it comes to microdosing, it's a bit like a box of chocolates. You never quite know what you're going to get. People's responses to it can be all over the map. And whether it's a magic bullet for depression and anxiety is still up for debate. Scientists have some cool ideas about how it might work, but they're hungry for more research to really nail down the facts. So the bottom line is tread carefully, stay informed and be ready for a journey that might not have all the answers just yet. Oh man, let me tell you about this journey that I have been on. For years, I've been steering clear of the pharmacy, opting for a holistic approach to my healing. It's been helpful, no doubt, but there was still something missing. And then it all happened, thanks to mushrooms. So picture this, I'm dealing with CPTSD, depression and anxiety, feeling like I'm carrying the weight of the world. Then I decided to take a tiny 225 milligram dose of mushrooms yesterday morning. Within just 40 minutes, it was like a magical transformation. The anxiety that felt like it was suffocating me, the heavy cloud of depression and the relentless stress that I've been carrying around literally melted away. It was as if a fog had been lifted and for the first time in like forever, I felt a sense of calm and clarity that has been missing for so long. This experience has given me a glimmer of hope and a peek into the future of where I could find healing and relief without pharmaceuticals, which I've been avoiding anyway. My microdosing journey started just yesterday and it was nothing short of amazing. And guess what? Today, the same deal. With typical antidepressants, you often have to wait like weeks for any effects. But with this, it was literally instant. All my anxiety and depression lifted. Seriously, it started about 30 minutes in. So I've done my fair research on microdosing and many people talk about these like wild positive feelings, a sense of being connected, filled with love and sensing something beyond the ordinary. Apparently it's tough to put into words because it's so deep and intense, but one common thread through all the research and stories and threads that I've read is that everyone just felt trust and surrender. You know, when it comes to microdosing, people often talk about this overwhelming sense of connection, love, a feeling like there's something more to this world than just meets the eye. It's apparently like this deep, intense trust and surrender, whether it's to a higher power, the universe, God, or just the whole process itself. I imagined it was the same as the connection that I have during my ayahuasca ceremonies. Feeling loved, worthy, and important during these moments is just beautiful. It can truly kickstart your personal growth, healing and give you a whole new perspective on yourself and your place in this world. 
But here's the thing, to really make the most of these insights and emotions, you've got to integrate them into your life. That might look like reflection, mindfulness, or even reaching out to your spiritual advisor for some guidance. You won't believe how many people have said that these experiences are some of the most spiritually significant and personally meaningful moments in their lives. They're like these major life events that change the way you see the world, reducing anxiety and depression improving your relationships, and making you look at life and death in a whole new light. Currently, these experiences can completely reshape your view of love and nature. You start to feel this incredible interconnectedness with everything, and it gives you this deep appreciation for the way everything in life is interconnected. So, with all this said, and after all the research I've done, and the groups that I've joined, and the threads that I've followed... I decided I wanted to give it a go. I wanted to feel that love and interconnectedness, not just when I go and sit in an ayahuasca ceremony for eight hours. I wanted to, I want to feel it on a daily basis. So I decided to start microdosing. But here's the catch. You've got to approach these experiences with respect and caution, especially when psychedelics are involved. It's not just about having a wild trip. It's about using these moments for personal growth. It's like a journey within a journey, and it can be absolutely life-changing. So my journey with psychedelics actually kicked off in 1994, way before the internet and uh, cell phones, well, in South Africa anyway. That was just after my mother's death. So seeking peace and healing, I turned to shrooms and LSD, and I can't tell you how much they helped my 16-year-old self. The catch? My dad didn't quite see eye to eye with my choices. I ended up being sent to Sanka, which is the South Africa Narcotics Association, and grounded, I think, for six months. But let's be real, that didn't stop me from having more psychedelic adventures. I just had to be more sneakier about it, hiding in the shadows of secrecy. It felt like this unspeakable, naughty, almost evil thing, when in reality, it might have been what got me through those tough days. I never took antidepressants and I never went to therapy. As the years went by, I continued to dabble with these substances into my 30s. But more for recreational kicks because, you know, they were considered bad. And we all do bad things for fun, right? Wrong. Fast forward to today. I'm 45, chilling in Tulum, surrounded by the Mayans, the sacred psilocybin mushroom native to Mexico, healers, shamans, and my spiritual crew. And guess what? They're all about using these substances for healing. So to all the naysayers out there, show me one statistic of someone, anyone, who got into a fight or harmed themselves or others on shrooms, compared that to alcohol, which took my aunt, my cousin, and my fiancé through depression and ultimately suicide. It's also quite a hidden chapter in the history of Alcoholics Anonymous, the founder himself who turned to psychedelics in his personal journey towards sobriety. He saw the potential of these substances, psychedelics, in helping others within the AA community. He saw the potential of these substances in helping others within the AA community, but he was met with such resistance and ultimately left that idea behind. What's fascinating is that this uncharted territory played a pivotal role in his own recovery, a sad story often left untold in the rooms or in the pages of the big book. But the secret's out. I've dedicated an entire chapter to this revelation in my debut memoir, aptly named Alchemy. So stay tuned for that one. So let me share my personal experience with you. I have been battling with CPTSD, that's Complex Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder, depression and anxiety, probably since the age of 16 after my mother died. And recently I decided to take a leap of faith and start microdosing. Just yesterday morning, I took my first 225 milligram microdose of psilocybin. And I couldn't believe what happened next. Within a mere 30 to 40 minutes, I felt this incredible transformation wash over me. It was as if the suffocating grip of anxiety, the weight of depression, and the relentless stress that had been my constant companions were suddenly dissolving before my eyes. 
It's like this heavy cloud lifted and for the first time in a very long time, I was bathed in a sense of calm and clarity that had eluded me for so long. Today has been just as remarkable as yesterday. You know, with regular antidepressants, you often have to wait patiently for like weeks before feeling any effect. But with microdosing, it's an instant game changer. Well, my anxiety and depression practically vanished right as I started coming up, roughly 30 to 40 minutes in. It's astounding how fast and potent these effects can be, and it's a stark contrast to the slower timeline of traditional medications. So far, I mean, it's only day two, my journey has been nothing short of a revelation, and it has opened my eyes to a whole new world of possibilities for healing and my own well-being. Now, I just want to mention, I'm microdosing. I'm not eating shrooms. I'm not, eat, I'm not macrodosing, so I'm not eating psilocybin in chocolate. I'm microdosing. The dose is so micro that I'm not seeing visuals and hallucinating or anything like that as much as I would love to, because I do love that sort of thing, but I'm not doing that. I still need to get through my day and operate, you know, function and operate. So there's no like flashing neon lights or pink elephants or anything like that. Everything just feels a lot more acute. The vibrant um, sounds are a little more clearer and crisper. And I've just had so much energy and motivation and enthusiasm. I don't feel depressed today. I don't feel anxious. I don't feel stressed. And I should be tired. I should be very tired because I didn't sleep last night due to ayahuasca going batshit crazy. Uh, but I have just got so much inspiration and motivation and I'm like focused and clear. I have made lists and I've crossed off lists and I'm only a day and a half into it. So just to be clear, I am microdosing. I'm not tripping. I'm not hallucinating. I'm not seeing visuals. It is very subtle. It is a microdose. It is enhancing my daily experience. Mushroom that I'm microdosing is known as the golden teacher. Isn't that just such a beautiful name? The technical name is Psilocybe cubenesis. So the golden teacher, it's quite the popular character in the realm of psychedelic mushrooms. But here's the thing, the catchy name isn't tied to a specific subspecies, rather it's used to describe certain strains of Psilocybe cubenesis that have the unique quirks. Hailing from Mexico, where I am now, this mushroom is quite the reputation for spiritual and soul-searching abilities. It has this golden brown cap with a charming wavy pattern and its stem, sturdy as can be. When it's all grown up, this little guy packs the punch, producing some decent levels of psilocybin, that stuff that takes your mind on a wild journey when you ingest it. Now here's the cool part. The Golden Teacher isn't just a fun name. It's like your wise and gentle guide in the world of psychedelics. Folks who've taken a trip with it often talk about how it brings clarity, deep introspection, and a better understanding of themselves. It's like a therapy session with Mother Nature. People use it to grow personally, explore their spirituality, and even for healing. But a quick note, you've got to treat it with the utmost respect and follow the rules, especially when it comes to the legal stuff. The legality of psilocybin containing mushrooms can be a real maze depending on where you are in the world. The Golden Teacher has been around for ages and used by indigenous communities for ceremonies and healing. But lately, it's been making a comeback in the spotlight. Why, you ask? Well, researchers and advocates are digging deep to uncover its potential therapeutic benefits, especially for mental health conditions like depression, anxiety, and PTSD. They're basically trying to harness the wisdom of this golden teacher to make our lives better and understand ourselves a bit more. It's an exciting journey and who knows where it will lead us next. So here's the deal, microdosing psychedelics, so taking tiny amounts of stuff like psilocybin, mushrooms and LSD has become pretty interesting because folks believe it helps things like depression, anxiety and ADHD. One cool idea is that microdosing might make your brain extra flexible, like it can learn new tricks. That could mean feeling better for a good while, like improved mood and thinking skills. But remember, this is still a bit of a mystery and we need more research to say for sure. Another perk some people mention is that microdosing could make you more mindful and self-aware. It helps you stay in the moment and understand yourself better. 
And over time, that could mean changing how you think and act. And some people are even using microdosing to cut down on other addictions like booze and cigarettes, which is kind of neat for our long-term health. But if you're thinking of trying microdosing for your mental health, talk to a professional and make sure you follow the rules where you live. Microdosing is on the rise, no doubt about it. Thanks to its availability and the word spreading like wildfire on social media, more and more people are giving it a shot. But here's the thing. Remember, it's not a trend, a fad, or something to do just for kicks. It's a profound journey towards healing and personal transformation. So while it may be catching on, remember its true essence and purpose. Why would you microdose, you might be asking. Some people swear by microdosing, especially with stuff like psilocybin or LSD, for giving their mood a serious lift. It's like a mood-boosting magic trick that can help with things like depression, anxiety, or just feeling shit for the day. Creatives take note. Microdosing seems to crank up the creativity dial, like a mental spark that helps with thinking out the box and finding genius solutions to problems. Imagine having a laser-like focus and getting stuff done like a productivity ninja. That's the promise users are making about microdosing. It's like a turbo boost for your brain. For some people, a spiritual journey or just looking to connect with the universe, microdosing is like the compass. It can lead to mindfulness and a feeling of being one with the world. It's kind of like your spirit guide in a tiny daily dose. And if social situations freak you out, microdosing might just be the social superhero. Apparently, it can help people with social anxiety or general anxiety feel more at ease in the company of others. Some people are saying that microdosing is like a secret weapon against chronic pain. It turns down the volume on aches and pains. Fitness buffs and athletes have joined the microdosing party too. They believe it amps up their endurance and motivation during workouts. It's also said to be a deep dive into yourself. Microdosing can be like a magnifying glass for your soul. It helps you dig deep and understand your thoughts, feelings and behaviours better. A lot of folks are using microdosing as their escape route from things like alcohol, nicotine and prescription medication. It's like a gentle helping hand to let go of the things that no longer serve them. And some people are just plain curious about what's going on inside their heads. Microdosing is like a ticket to the psychedelic theme park. But remember what works for one person might not do a thing for another. Remember, while microdosing has its perks, it's still in the research phase. Approach it with your detective hat on ideally with a healthcare professional or a shaman, a guide, a healer, someone else, a mentor, and make sure you are doing it where it's legal and above board. In the realm of microdosing psychedelics like psilocybin and LSD, there's a well-established protocol that many enthusiasts swear by. This protocol, keyword, is essentially a structured approach to safely and effectively incorporating minuscule doses of these compounds into our daily periodic routine. You might ask what the goal is. Well, the goal is simply to experience subtle yet potentially transformative effects, all while minimizing the risks associated with full-blown psychedelic trips. So what exactly does this microdosing protocol entail and how can it be harnessed for personal growth, enhanced creativity and improved well-being? This isn't a one-size-fits-all game. There are some guidelines to keep in mind when you're walking this path. Start small. We're talking about 0.1 to 0.2 grams of dried mushrooms, but some folks go even lower to 0.05 grams. The idea here is to take a dose so tiny that you won't feel any major psychedelic effects. It's all about those subtle long-term benefits. Less is definitely more. Producing is like a dance. You've got to find your own rhythm. Many folks follow the one day on, two days off beat. That means taking a microdose one day and then giving yourself two days off to reset. Others groove to a four days on, three days off tune. It's all about what feels right for you. Just like when you're diving deep into a full-blown psychedelic experience, your mindset and your surroundings matter big time. This is known as set and setting. It's a good idea to pair microdosing with practices like mindfulness, meditation, 
and journaling to really tune in. And of course, make sure you're in a comfy space when you microdose. Grab a journal and be ready to spill the beans. Keep track of your mood, your energy levels, how productive you are, and any other observations before and after each microdose. This will be your roadmap to understanding how it's working for you. Safety first. You've got to be sure your mushrooms are legit. Wild mushrooms are a no-go because they can be toxic. It's way safer to grow your own or source from someone trustworthy. Don't just go out there and pick mushrooms, guys. Check the law in your neck of the woods. Psilocybin's legal status varies, so make sure you're on the right side of the law. If you've got any health conditions or you're taking other medications, keep your healthcare provider in the loop. Psilocybin can sometimes play nice or not so nice with certain medications, so your doctor might be able to help you navigate with that. And just adapt. Be ready to switch things up. Everyone's different, so you might need to tweak your dosage or schedule to find your sweet spot. And remember, while microdosing with psilocybin has its fans and some early research is promising, it's not a guaranteed magic bullet. What works for one person might not work for another, so keep your expectations real. Safety first, always consult with a healthcare professional or your mentor, guide, shaman, healer when in doubt and stay open to the journey. Right, so I'm going to elaborate on the set and setting. It's all about the nitty gritty of having a safe and positive journey with psychedelics because the set and setting is like the golden rule here. Set is all about what's going on inside your head before you dive into the psychedelic adventure. Your mood, your mental state, your emotional vibe can totally steer your ship. It's like the attitude you bring to the party, going with, in with a Going in with a positive, open mindset is key because if you're carrying a bunch of negativity, emotional baggage, it can lead to a pretty rocky and a not-so-fun trip. Then setting is like the stage where this wild experience unfolds. You want it to be cozy, safe, and under control. Trust me, you don't want a bad trip, and the setting plays a big role in preventing that. Find a place where you feel like nothing's going to jump out and scare you, where you can relax without any distractions or weird surprises. And who you're with matters big time. Stick with trusted friends and people who really know their way around these experiences. I wouldn't be taking any psychedelics, not even microdosing with any strangers or people that don't have my best interests at heart. Psychedelic journeys are super personal and sensitive. So it's like inviting someone into your soul space, into your chronosphere. You want them to be understanding, supportive and ready to lend a hand if things get bumpy. So in a nutshell, psychedelics are a powerful tool, but you've got to use them wisely. Stay informed, follow the rules, be safe, especially if you're thinking of using them for therapy and healing like I am. Having experienced guides or professionals can really be a game changer and make the whole experience a lot smoother and more meaningful. Another very important element in microdosing or any psychedelic journey or trip really is ritual. When you're diving into microdosing, it's not just about popping a pill or eating a piece of mushroom and hoping for the best. It involves intention and a sort of ritual for many people. First things first, do your homework. Research what microdosing is all about, the potential benefits, and especially understand the substance you're dealing with. Knowing your dosage, safety measures, and the legal status in your area is crucial. Next, choose your microdosing substance wisely. Make sure you've got a trustworthy source. Your environment matters too. Find a quiet, safe space where you can have your microdosing experience without interruptions. When it comes to dosing, precision is key. If you're eating the mushrooms, use a scale to measure out your dose accurately. Typical microdoses are an absolute fraction of what you'd take for a full-blown trip. As for timing, Mornings work well for most people. It can help you avoid any sleep disruptions. Setting intention is a bit like having a game plan. What do you want to get out of this experience? It's like setting the stage for your day. Keep a journal to track your feelings and thoughts as the day goes on. What's changing, what's improving and what's not? Plan your day thoughtfully. Many find that microdosing enhances their focus, creativity and productivity. Stay mindful throughout your day practice meditation or deep breathing to stay connected with your experience and of course stay hydrated and eat well 
You're giving your mind and body a unique experience, so treat them right. Safety is paramount, especially if you have any underlying conditions or take any other medications. Finally, after your microdosing day, take some time to reflect on what you've learned or how it's affecting your life. It's all about integrating these experiences into your daily routine and personal growth journey. Remember, microdosing is very personal. What works for one person might not work the same way for another. For my three-month microdosing protocol, my journey, I plan to up the intake of my water. I already drink a lot of water, but I want to drink a lot more water. Yesterday, I started with a delicious green juice. Today, I had a smoothie. So just generally eating healthy, cutting out alcohol completely. Um, I might have a glass of wine at the weekend when I am not microdosing on my days off, but I'll see how I feel. I just want my vessel to be clean and clear so that the medicine, the mushroom, psilocybin, can, can really work its magic. So there's a cool resurgence of research going on, and it's really sparking a psychedelic revolution. I remember six years ago when I first sat in ceremony with the medicine ayahuasca, I came out and I said, psychedelic revolution, there needs to be a psychedelic revolution, and it's, it's, a, it's amongst us. So let's talk about Timothy Leary. He was like the psychedelic rock star of the 20th century. He did some groundbreaking research on psychedelics like LSD and psilocybin. His gig was all about figuring out what makes these experiences tick and how they could unlock the secrets of our minds. He believed that these substances could totally shake up the world of psychology and mental health. Imagine that, right? A whole new way of thinking about our brains. But Tim wasn't jamming solo. He was part of a bigger crew that included folks like Ram Dass and Terence McKenna. Together they set sail on this crazy voyage into the uncharted waters of consciousness and spirituality using psychedelics. God, I wish I lived in the 60s. They were like the pioneers of trippy exploration, pushing boundaries and literally blowing minds. Now, as cool as that sounds, there was a bit of a buzzkill back in the 60s. Controversy and skepticism reigned on the psychedelic parade, leading to some serious restrictions and research coming to a screeching halt. It's kind of sad because the controversy overshadowed the therapeutic potential of these mind-bending substances. I think we've kind of missed out on some real opportunities there. But it's time for us to spark debate on the healing powers of psychedelics. So fast forward to today. We were in the middle of a psychedelic renaissance. Scientists are once again rolling up their sleeves and diving into research on these substances. They're checking out how psychedelics can help people dealing with stuff like depression, anxiety, PTSD, ADHD and addictions. And they're doing it by the book, legally and scientifically. The conversation about psychedelics is definitely going strong. People are talking about how they can boost personal growth, healing, and even change society as a whole. In the big picture, exploring altered states of consciousness is just one chapter in the epic tale of humans trying to figure themselves out and connect with the world. Now onto the safety of psychedelics. It's highly unlikely to overdose on a microdose of substances like psilocybin or LSD. When we talk about microdosing, we're talking about taking an incy wincy dose, way below the level when you'd start seeing things or feeling all trippy. Usually a microdose is about one-tenth or one-twentieth of what people take for a full-blown psychedelic trip. The goal here isn't to blast off into another dimension, I wish it was, but to get those subtle, almost imperceptible effects that some people believe can have therapeutic and brain-boosting benefits. Now, having said that, you've still got to be smart about it. Measure your doses carefully. Make sure you're getting your stuff from a reliable source. And of course, follow the rules where you live. Also, if you're on any other meds or underlying health stuff going on, it's a good idea to have a chat with a healthcare professional before you start microdosing. Just to be on the safe side and make sure there aren't any funky interactions or risks. In the world of psychedelics, an overdose usually means taking a mega dose that sends you into a crazy, intense and potentially dangerous trip. That can mean feeling super confused, paranoid, seeing things that aren't there, getting all agitated or even putting yourself in risky situations. In cases like that, getting some medical attention might be necessary. Now, when we're talking about a lethal overdose, like taking so much of something that it can actually kill you, that's incredibly rare with mushrooms. Psilocybin, the magic ingredient in the shrooms, isn't toxic. 
and it's not known to be a deadly substance like other things out there. But that doesn't mean you can go all wild with mushrooms and everything will be fine. There are still risks involved, especially if you chow down on a ton of them. You might end up in a really bad mental place and in really rare cases you could do stuff that's dangerous to yourself or others. But that is macrodosing. Where I'm talking about microdosing, eating minuscule amounts, incy wincy bits, one tenth or one twenty of like a usual amount to even see things. Ideally, do it in a controlled setting with experienced people that know what they're doing. I would highly recommend watching Fantastic Fungi on Netflix if you haven't already. I actually watched it last night after my first day of microdosing. And then I followed it up with Have a Good Trip, Adventures in Psychedelics, also on Netflix. The Have a Good Trip one features some very well-known names like Sting, Ben Stiller, Anthony Bourdain, Deepak Chopra, Adam from the Beastie Boys, ASAP Rocky and more. Fantastic Fungi is a visually stunning and thought-provoking documentary that takes you on a mesmerizing journey into the world of mushrooms and fungi. It explores the incredible ecological and healing significance of fungi through breathtaking time-lapse photography and interviews with mycologists, scientists and experts. It delves into the ways fungi influence life on Earth, from aiding in decomposition to forming symbiotic relationships with plants. The documentary also looks at the potential of fungi to address global challenges like pollution and disease. And it touches on the resurgence of psilocybin mushrooms for mental health treatment. Overall, Fantastic Fungi offers an enlightening exploration of the often overlooked kingdom of fungi, revealing their profound impact on our world and potential symbiosis with them. Feeling incredibly inspired, creative and utterly transformed on like day two, I'm currently crafting a series of meditations specifically designed for those embarking on a microdosing journey. You'll be able to find these guided meditations on my YouTube channel and website alchemy.co. Feel free to download and share these meditations freely. My hope is that they'll be a valuable companion on your magical journey with the medicine. Whether you're setting intentions, seeking spiritual connection, or simply exploring the microdosing experience, these meditations are here to support and enhance your unique path. I'm also so excited to introduce you to my friend Patricia Murphy in New Mexico, who I had the pleasure of meeting during an ayahuasca retreat in Costa Rica a couple of years ago. Patricia is on this amazing journey to teach and share the world of microdosing psilocybin, and I can't wait to have her as a guest on my podcast soon. She'll be sharing all sorts of insights and experiences. If you're feeling the pull to dive into the transformative world of microdosing, and trust me, that's how I ended up here too, don't hesitate to contact Patricia. She's here to be your guide on this path of exploration and healing, and I think you're going to love what she has to offer. As I wrap up this podcast on microdosing psilocybin, I'd like to share a personal reflection. Yesterday I woke up at 4am and embarked on my first day of this microdosing journey. It was a day filled with focus, productivity and a remarkable sense of clarity that I hadn't experienced in a very long while. Today I took the medicine again and I plan to continue this routine with a break for the weekend and then resuming Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. As I reflect on my two-day experience, I'm filled with excitement and anticipation for what the next three months will bring, the rest of 2023. It's a beautiful and healing way to conclude my year, and I invite all of you to follow along as I explore the potential benefits and insights that microdosing may offer me. Thank you for joining me today on this journey, and here's to the rest of the year filled with growth, healing, and self-discovery. Have a great weekend, guys.